So Mrigang, you have appeared for SP9, which is ER. M uh, enterprise risk management very few people very few actuaries appear for this paper sp9 can you elaborate can you tell us more about this and uh, who should give sp9 who should not and if i want to give sp9 at this stage then why should i be appearing for this i am biased towards this sp9 was my favorite paper i would say it's not just the financial risk that we are talking about here but all kinds of risk anyone can be exposed to be it banks insurance companies or even corporates who are manufacturing some coffee powder i would say so it's about very realistically thinking about every risk that you can actually look around in the society or in any organization you go to sp9 i think the, the additional benefit of becoming a uh, clearing sp9 is you get a sera qualification so just adding one more risk management qualification to your name but apart from that i think the knowledge and the content sp9 has can you I, elaborate on the content sure so i think way back when we talk about risk management it was all in small domains and small pockets someone is a credit risk specialist someone is a market risk specialist someone only talks about liquidity risk or operation risk but then it we all realized that all of these components and there's no one who's adding all of these components together there is a imbalance between risk management between large organizations for example some a part of a large organization based in india might have be having different risk management techniques and based in usa might have different and given that these are not aligned it might cause a lot of inefficiencies so enterprise risk management is all about managing the risk of the entire enterprise under one umbrella it's not that there's only one solution that fits all under erm we do segregate we do find the best solution for best risk we talk about having holistic risk management that is just not focusing on the downside risk but also taking the benefits of the upside risk we talk about having a good governance in place of risk management having a strong taxonomy for example if someone in one part of the organization can easily communicate what risk is there how to stop it or how to mitigate it to a second to another part of the same organization so is there any future scope of appear, students appearing sp9 like can i appear sp9 with a life paper like sp2 or sp3 or with my general insurance sp7 sp8 papers or maybe with sp5 or sp6 can i add sp9 along with these and will it help me in my organization uh i think uh, i don't see any reason not to add it because i think the second part of this paper is all about modeling you start from the data which is the essential for any modeling the cleaning of data how to manipulate data then you talk about different interrelation between different risk how to model it talking about extreme value theory you talk about different risk an organization in, uh, is exposed to that makes it for life insurance company or non life insurance company i think when you talk about sp9 it gives you more clarity in terms of modeling and in terms of any risk management that you have to do be it life risk be it underwriting risk be it credit risk or be it market risk be it having capital so that you can manage all these risks